I give thanks for so much that I do not deserve on this journey of life. I have been so lucky in so many ways. There's a story that I read last evening, a short story. There, there's a website on the internet, and obviously we don't know whether these stories are real or not, but it was a story that touched my heart. This short story was written by a first grade teacher, and she was talking about a Thanksgiving exercise that she had done in the classroom with her students. There is one particular student in the classroom that is living in a home setting that is filled with a lot of turmoil right now, she describes. Uh, stable family, home life situation dysfunctional, um, limited resources, on the edge of extreme poverty. And as a part of this exercise, she had just asked everyone in the class to take a little time out and draw a picture of Thanksgiving. Something you're thankful for, something about Thanksgiving that you particularly like. Let's take some time and draw pictures together and create some artwork to celebrate Thanksgiving. And so the class was in the process of doing this and then, as often happens in a classroom, all of these little artworks were going to be pinned up on the bulletin board and each student brought his or her creation over to the teacher, and it was placed on the bulletin board as a part of their thanksgiving for this week. And she said, like many of us would do, there were pilgrims, and there were Indians, and there were turkeys, and there were tables covered with food, and there were pumpkin pies, and there were all kinds of colorful designs, autumn leaves and things that might relate to Thanksgiving, and there were stick figures that were readily identified, but this one little guy who came from this particular home that was very challenged had put his hand on the piece of paper, and he had traced around the hand, all the way around all of the fingers of the hand. And then he had colored it in to look like a hand, and he wrote, thank you. Well, it was a very unusual picture. It wasn't like the other pieces of artwork. And the teacher received it and caught herself for a moment and then said, oh, it's lovely. Let's put this on the board. And of course, as you can imagine, as it is being put on the bulletin board, wheels are spinning in the teacher's mind. I wonder what this, what this means. What is this? But of course, Act normal, put it up there, beautiful, beautiful, nice job. And then the children all talk about the artwork that they've created. And uh, the little boy remains quiet. He doesn't say anything. Later in the day, when they were doing their lessons and it was kind of like a study hall time, she went over to the little boy's desk and she knelt down beside his desk. And she said, uh, Andrew, I love your picture. What does it mean? And he said, that's your hand. 
I'm saying thank you to you because you're the kindest person I know. And the teacher in her reflection said, oh, tears, tears. He said, you give me a smile every morning, you make sure I have something to eat during the day, you hold my hand when we go to the playground, I'm thankful for your hand. And I can almost feel the emotion of that moment. Someone who was steady, reliable, kind, good, honest, secure, in perhaps a life that was very uncertain and kind of topsy-turvy. I couldn't get my mind off this short story all night long. I kept thinking about it all night long. Hand. Who would ever think of hand as a Thanksgiving symbol, but why wouldn't you think of hand? our hands and how they enable generosity, goodness, work, all the things we do manually with our hands, all the things we do lovingly and affectionately with our hands, all of the possibilities of our hands and of course I couldn't help but think of some of the terrible things we do with our hands we wield swords we can kill we can hurt we can injure and then I come back to the positive because I want to stay positive maybe that's a challenge for me and for you this week as we read the passage from Deuteronomy that talks about God's participation in our lives, the hand that God extends to every one of us in moments of abundance, in moments of brokenness, the hand of God which reaches for us. caringly, lovingly, consistently. And then Paul's writing to the Corinthians. Those who sow sparingly reap sparingly. The image of the sower, the basket of seed, and casting the seed upon the field. Hands are a powerful symbol. Of course, growing up on a farm, I think about the hands that grow crops, the hands that tend orchards, the hands that pick blackberries. Remember how stained my hands would get picking blackberries? The hands that grow beautiful trees and shrubbery and flowers, the hands that enable 